As promised, journeying down for tuna, making the journey south. All right, now I'm headed down the five. If you're not familiar with the five here in California, it's a real exciting drive. You get to drive straight for like five hours and there's nothing to see but dry grass and the occasional cow. That's what I'm talking about. Tall grass, tall dry grass for miles and miles. There's literally nothing else. But it's really the fastest, easiest way to get down there. Meeting up with a few guys down there, both of which you've known, you've seen on the channel many, many times, but it's been a while since I've fished with both of them, so I'm excited to get down there. We've got all its expensive stuff in tow. I'm excited to show you it all. Hopefully, we get some fish when we get down there. So, anyways, long drive ahead. We'll see you down south. See that little orange blob? Very hard to see. Kind of to see, but that's our state fish. It's a Garibaldi right there. San Diego, we made it. it. Took me about seven hours. Actually, here's the thing. If you're going from the Bay Area down to SoCal, whether it be LA, San Diego, wherever, the best time to leave is like 6 a.m. Because then you get out of the Bay Area before traffic starts, and then you hit LA right around noon, and I feel like that's when, you know, you can't avoid the LA traffic unless you drive through there at like midnight but noon is probably the next best time to minimize the amount of traffic that you hit. So, I mean, if you leave later, like you leave at nine, you're gonna hit traffic in the Bay Area, and then you probably hit traffic again when you get to LA. And if you leave at like noon, you probably won't hit any traffic in the Bay Area, but you're still gonna hit traffic in LA area. So 6 a.m. I think is that sweet spot. That's the best time to leave. So I'm here a few hours early. It's about 2.30, three o'clock, something like that. Um, and the boat doesn't leave until 7 p.m. Um, and we could probably start boarding probably around five ish or something like that but i was able to secure us some bunks so on an overnight trip we're gonna be sleeping on the boat actually this is a one and a half day so we're gonna be spending two nights on the boat we're gonna be departing around 7 p.m today spend the night on the boat fish all day tomorrow spend that night on the boat and then we're coming back tomorrow or the following morning at like 7 a.m something like that so we're spending about i think 36 hours on the boat and i think the bunk is actually somewhat important it sounds like you're just going to be getting you know they're all the same you know everyone's going to be sleeping in there but you know when you're sleeping around like 30 other dudes that have been fishing all day there's no showers on the boat so we kind of want with a little bit of ventilation so we all want a little bit closer to the door so uh yeah it's happening only a few hours away i don't really know what the bite's like i do know that last time this boat went out on a one and a half day they got limits of bluefin as well as a few yellowfin so um, the fishing seems to be good. I'm actually really excited to show you the setups that we have for this trip. I just feel powerful holding these rods and reels. I mean, none of them are even close to what we typically use in the Bay Area. So definitely a different style of fishing. All right, look at this lineup I got here, man. This is my big reel is a hundred pound on here. I got a 50 pound outfit, 40 pound, 30 pound, and 25 pound. Shout out to Alan. If you're watching, you know who you are hooked me up with these subs. These are not mine, except for that, the baby one. But yeah, just look at that thing. This thing probably has more line than like all of my other reels that I have at home combined. But yeah, ready to go. Probably got another hour or so before we can board the boat. It's pretty freaking warm out here, which is probably a good thing, I think, for tuna. Warm water fish, the weather's warm. Hopefully they're biting a little better. I don't know if I really know if that's the case, but that's what I'm gonna tell myself. Definitely, definitely not fishing for halibut or salmon, or really anything we have back in the Bay Area, other than maybe the occasional bluefin. Yeah. We'll this, right so you brought five. I brought five, yeah. I brought five, and Ensei brought eight. Eight. <laughs> got 18 subs. He's gonna catch a fish on every rod. <laughs> Make it worth it. Yeah, we're ready for a serious journey here. Get him. Let's go.
bunks are. It's actually a pretty big bunk. These are more standard size. Definitely not the most roomy of areas, but this is the deal when we're out fishing. Ideally, we're not spending too much time here. Ideally, we're spending all our time out there catching fish. Probably one hour into our, I don't know how long, four or five hour drive. The captain said we're going to be looking for night bite of tuna, so it's very possible in the middle of the night we might get the call and we're we'll going to have to head out there and drop our jigs down, but we'll see. And in the morning, once it gets light out, then we'll be doing fly lines, stuff like that with the live bait. But right now we're just rigging up. Pocky's ready to go. The sun's setting out there. So I guess it already set. Alright, well I'm going to do a little bit of voiceover on this video just because with this style of fishing there's so much going on in so little time it's impossible to kind of explain everything that's happening while it's actually happening. So here this is the night bite. First I took a little nap and I think it was around midnight, maybe 1am, something like that. We got the first call and um, the, the captain had marked some fish, marked some fish on the fish finder. Got up, dropped my jig down, honestly I was still kind of half asleep just kind of fishing on cruise control. And say was letting me know that the uh, captain mentioned no, that the really. fish were getting marked at 240 feet. So, drop my jig down here. You can see this is a heavy, uh, I think this is a 300 gram jig, a little over a pound. And uh, we're just basically we're dropping it down till we hit the desired depth and then winding it back in super fast. Oh. And you can get hit whether you're dropping it down or reeling it back in. You basically just want on the way down looking for pauses in your uh, drop. And that's indicating obviously a fish hitting your lure. And on the way back in, you know, you all know what a fish feels like. Anything that's heavier than your jig, uh, something's going on there. So, first couple drops, nothing much happening. We're just dropping it down a couple of times. First few stops were like, you know, I got one drop in. And as far as I know, it basically just means that the fish were, were coming out on fish finder. We dropped down and then just as fast as they were coming in, they were moving on. So, um, yeah, the first couple of stops, nothing. And then on the third stop, we started hooking up. I think the first fish was landed on that third stop. And then also on that third stop after that first fish was landed, um, here's a little action. All right, a couple more coming through. Going deeper now. Say, uh, it's been like 340 feet. It's a little hard to tell here, but I do get a hit. And honestly, this one was the heaviest bite that I felt the whole trip. Um, basically, when it hit, I could not even reel against it. That's how heavy it was. I was basically just kind of holding on and gaining line you know, every once in a while when I could. It was like basically gaining inch by inch, I felt like. Um, and it was the first bite that I ever had, so I really had no idea how big it was. But unfortunately, on this one, just as fast as it started, it ended because uh, me and another angler next to me, unfortunately, lines crossed and then when that happened, I don't know, the hooks pulled. I'm honestly not sure if it was me that was hooked up or it was him, but one of us had a fish and um, yeah, that one didn't make it to the boat, unfortunately. We took a few more stops. I think the fourth and fifth stop didn't happen. I don't know, for whatever reason, it was like every third time was the charm. And then the sixth stop, we finally got into a few more fish. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? That was big. Yeah, me too. Oh man. <laughs> well, there was like there was two of us. Two, one of us was and the other one was just tangled up, so I don't know which one. It's so hard to so tight. I know. <laughs> I, I couldn't even whine, I was just holding on. Yeah. Dude, I'm already like out now. <laughs> to hold it yeah. so you can get the gas. Later. Why is it free school? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Good night. Yeah, we got him. Thank you. 
And so honestly on this one, I know you can kind of tell I'm reeling a little bit slower than I was when I was just you know, jigging the lure. But I didn't really know if it was a fish or just a tangle because uh, the the first fish that I felt was so much heavier than this one. I thought honestly that I might have been just tangling this one, but definitely not a tangle. You'll see here, finally getting a fish on deck. Whew. Yeah. Show the jig. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, number seven. Number seven? Yeah. Alright, nice week, boss. Thank you. Sorry, Tom, do I got your, uh, line flat all bloody? <laughs> Everything, I'm <laughs> all... There you go, Taku. On the way down? Yeah. No, on the way up. On the way up? Hell yeah. Where's your other camera? Oh, it's inside. Sorry. I'll let you fight the fish. All I right. just I right, got mine at free school. Is he pulling drag or is just a yeah. slow? Pulling drag here and there. Yeah, yeah, we got him. Oh. Go. Right. And so yeah, Taku got one. I got one. Ensi got a couple. And that was pretty much it for the morning bite. I'd say we made probably around 10 or so stops and I got fish on maybe a third of those stops. Um, so there was definitely some action. I think I also had one more bite, one or two more bites I would say that never got pinned and uh, that was it. But eventually morning came, as you can see here, the sun's just starting to come up. And when the morning came, that means that we're gonna be fishing more live bait. So you're picking a live sardine. Most of the action came on the fly line and um, yeah, early and often, might start nice right and hot. really quick on a charter boat like this super super important to stay straight with your line you don't want to be fishing uh, with your fish off to the side either to the left or the right very bad um, because there's so many lines going over under here and across you can see me going up over some under some um, you really want to stay straight on with your fish to avoid as many tangles as possible if all goes right avoid all the tangles get your fish to the surface this is what can happen
the color again. Seven. All right. Thank you. Cool. One on the fly line. And I forgot to mention this at the time, but most of the action that we got on this trip was on the belly hook sardine. Basically, you want to belly hook the sardine so that when you cast it out, flip it out there, that fish swims away from the boat. You want to get your fish as far away from the boat as possible to avoid all the other baits that are being cast out by the other anglers. Oh yeah! There you go. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Fresh one! Yeah. Oh yeah. So let's pull some drag. You fought that one for a while. Oh, I'm gonna sneak behind you here. Coming down underneath. 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 Coming underneath. Underneath. Coming underneath. Coming underneath. Coming underneath. Coming underneath. Coming down. Coming underneath. Coming down. Oh, no. too much. So now that it's light out we can look at the jig. This I'm is all the bite sure. marks? No, I think that, that's from the hook. Oh, from the hook. actually maybe not. Yeah, that doesn't Like reach. those right there might be from the hook. But, but those right here. there and this one. That one. Not a hook. I think those are from tuna. Tuna bites. Oh yeah, look at that. Tuna that bites. looks like, oh, yeah, like teeth a, right there. Those are teeth for sure. Yeah. This is the one you got it on? Yeah. You were using this one the whole time? Yeah. And I think I got hit at least one nice. other time. Yeah, definitely like the uh, the glows has been working. Yeah. I think Ensei's glow, mine glows. Yeah, that's glow. true, huh? Yeah. Some light down there. So, this is the last thing I'll add to this video. It's a little uh, frustrating on the fly line bite. I mean, I did land one first thing in the morning, but I broke off, I think, three or four fish, um, and a couple of them were because I crossed another line, which is just going to happen you know, from time to time on a, a charter boat like this. But I really don't know why so many of them were breaking off. I mean, I believe they were just chewing through the leader, which also happens, but um, I feel like I should have been landing more than I was at the time. You know, I was using a circle hook to try and get those fish pinned in the corner of the mouth. So maybe they weren't getting pinned in the corner of the mouth like I was planning, but uh, for whatever reason, didn't get any more fish, but uh, did have quite a bit of action. So definitely a fun trip. And then at the end of that, we ended up stopping a few more times uh, during the, the ride back in while it was dark again, trying a few more jig bites, but I think we only got one fish on the boat for those two or three stops that we made. But all in all, the boat I think ended up with two fish short of limits for the entire, entire boat, which is very, very good. 
I got my limit, Enzo got his limit, and Taco got his limit as well. So, very successful trip. That's a wrap, man. We fished for the last like 20 hours straight, something like that. Probably took like a couple of half hour naps in between there, but other than that, man, we fished hard. We got a long drive back and then a lot of fish processing to do, but uh, yeah, successful fishing journey. I don't know how these people do it. A lot of these, people, these guys will go multiple times, you know, a month and stuff like that, but you gotta really like fishing to come on a trip like this. Hardly any sleep, lots of grinding, and you know, if there's a big fish out there, it's a reward, but uh, yeah, it's definitely hardcore fishing. They don't really do anything like this in the Bay Area. All right, just made it home. I don't really know why I'm doing this in the bathroom, but it just came to me. Thought I'd give you my thoughts on the journey. Man, in like two and a half days, like, what is that? Like a little over 50 hours. I'm just not capable of doing math right now. I feel like I've been up for the last three days straight. And I guess we did, let's see, we did 15 hours driving at least, probably maybe actually definitely more, but anyways, about 15 hours driving in the car and then definitely more than that in the boat. And then probably about 20 hours fishing. I don't know how we crammed all that into three days, but uh, yeah, didn't get much rest. I'm gonna be, be sleeping good for the next few days. I'm gonna need some time to rest, but it was a fun journey. It was always, it's always fun fishing with Taco and Ensei, but it's always even a little bit better when we happen to get on some fish. So anyways, it was a fun trip. Thank you all for watching. And I'll, I'll probably do it again, but definitely gonna take a few naps first. So. I, don't know, I feel kind of weird talking to the mirror like this. Probably won't do this again, but you know what? I'm exhausted. Who knows what I'm doing right now?